So, you know, I swear one day I will use my real camera for these videos, but in the meantime, um, even though I just got my new camera, I still haven't filmed any of my videos with it. Yeah, I keep using my phone because I'm lazy. So this and the last video were shot on my phone. One day I'll use the real one. The day has come for me to retire my giant server. This is a dual Xeon E5 V2 system that I've been using for quite some time, uh, years actually. Uh, I had a previous single processor system and replaced it. Uh, this thing has uh, 24 cores, 48 threads, and tons of PCI Express slots, 256 gigs of ECC memory, and yeah, I don't need it anymore. I mean, <laughs> I, I just, I've moved my Plex server off of this, and I moved FreeNAS off of this, so now it's just basically a, a VM machine with like PFSense on it and Home Assistant and a couple other like little things. So I'm at the point where this thing is no longer needed. I'm gonna save some electricity and uh, sell this. And I'm basically gonna use existing parts to just convert what was this dual Xeon system into a single uh, AMD system and just go from there it'll be really low power if you watched my previous video i built a plex server from a new uh alder lake system and in this case i'm going to be reusing mostly stuff that i have already uh, this is a uh, ryzen 3600 and stock cooler i have a gigabyte motherboard in here this is one of the very few gigabyte motherboards that explicitly says it works with ECC memory. So this one, I, I did buy some ECC memory and it works fine. I couldn't find anything that was on the on the QVL for it. So I got some Time Tech sticks of, of DDR4. This is, uh, these are two 16 gig ECC sticks and I've confirmed that it is working properly. It does properly register as ECC. This thing only has six cores, 12 threads. I'm not gonna be running a lot on it basically give me my router home assistant and maybe like a couple little minor vms that won't really do much so a uh, really simple system it has lots of uh storage because i'm i'm hap i happen to have this case which is the uh, rosewell 4500u which has space for 15 drives <laughs> so uh, i'm just going to use all the spare drives i have and just have them farm in chia because why, why not they're they're sitting there I'm basically treating them like hot spares. It'll just sit here. I, that's why I put a drive controller in it. The specific motherboard I'm using is a B550 MD-S3H from Gigabyte. Uh, I, I like Gigabyte boards. I'm leaning towards ASRock in general because they tend to make more interesting boards and they also tend to have, they usually have the internet flashing, which I really like. Uh, I don't like having to like, especially in a server situation, having to connect up a USB stick and put a BIOS on it and flash it and stuff. Like it's just, nah. I like being able to just connect to the internet automatically in the BIOS and just do it a system update, a BIOS update. Like I said, I'm gonna be using storage in this. So this case is designed to hold these modules that hold lots of drives, five drives to be exact. And they have a 120 millimeter fan right on the front. They're really, really good for drive cooling. I really like these. Maybe not the best for vibration since they're all just kind of in there. But, you know, it's as good as you can get realistically without having a super high density server. I just rebuilt my TrueNAS system from <laughs> from going from a uh, 24 bay hot swap case that was super expensive and I absolutely hated it to this nice, uh, you know, cheap Rosewell case that will hold fewer drives, but I, I increased the size of the drives, So now it's not as bad. But anyway, I just fit, spent a whole week copying files and stuff and using really weird setups to, to copy tons and tons of files from my old arrays. Now it's all set up, it's in the rack, it's working. So this one is just gonna be spare drives. Before I put the drives away, a little uh, tip. These are the weird brackets that this case uses. So these go in like this and you put some on the bottom and then they, these modules slide in the front. But these are a real pain. They tend to fall off and you have to hold them from the bottom because there's another set on the bottom. So what I've found the easiest thing to do is to just simply put a little bit of tape right on the end and it helps guide it in and it won't fall off. You can even put tape here if they're, they're being an issue, but you, they usually kind of click in. 
So yeah, that makes a huge difference. So just stick some tape on these. This is just cheap painter's tape. And that's all you need to do to make this thing not a headache. So you just do that on all three modules, 15 drives and you're all set. I just have some not to a 2000 RPM industrial fans in there. You can use any old fan, it comes with fans, but uh, I don't like them, they're kind of loud. So I just threw in some Noctuas. As for the motherboard, like I said, I got I got two sticks of RAM, 32 gigs, even that might be a bit overkill, uh, but whatever, dual channel mode. I've done most of the cable management. I'm running uh, an older uh, Seasonic Prime Titanium power supply, 850 watt. This is gonna be next to nothing once the drives spin up, but uh, it's what I have, and titanium and platinum power supplies are pretty good at, at efficiency at lower wattages of their main, their total capacity. Also got one of these SAS expander boards that are really good. Uh, they, I think they're more expensive now, but I was paying $20 to $40 for these. They will take a standard SAS connection and expand it and let you hook up, up to like 32 drives to it. So I just have a simple, I think this is a 9200 4i4e which means it's got one connector on the inside one connector externally this this sas controller just runs right into the expander and then i can just plug in all my drives with regular sata cables or sas cables depending on what kind of drives you have i'm also going to be using a gigabit nick this motherboard has an onboard uh, gigabit nick but it's a uh, real tech and real tech and pf sense eh might as well use Use a gigabit NIC since there's, uh, this is a micro ATX board. It has three slots, so I have space for one of those. I'm also going to be using a 10 gigabit NIC. This is the Intel X550, and that's just a single port RJ45 card. Uh, it's oddly enough, it's kind of bent. I don't know why. The heat sink on this, it appears to be bending the board. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I didn't do that. It's been like that <laughs> for years, so... Just gonna roll with it and hope that's fine. If it ever dies, I'll just replace it. But yeah, that's a little sketchy. Now these cards, especially the SAS controller and the um, 10 gigabit NIC, the one gigabit one's fine. But these, these cards really do need some cooling. What I normally do is just attach a 40 millimeter fan to it with some zip ties, but they're so tightly packed that you can't really get fans in there. So it's one of those things where I was just kind of sitting there and I was wondering, I wonder if you can get a horizontal fan. Like, wouldn't that be nice? You could get a nice fan that would just blow down on all the cards. So, thanks to the miracle of 3D printing, I just happened to find that someone had already made one and it just screws in and it's great. So I'll put a link to that. I just got a older knock to a fan on that, a 120 millimeter. So <laughs> it's really nice when you can just think of something that you've never seen before and wonder if it exists. Not only does it exist, but you can download it and create it in an hour. So that was pretty nice. I like it when that works out. <laughs> and uh, the only, the, well, the only catch with that thing is that you can't use um, taller cards. So it won't work with GPUs, but these shorter cards works perfectly. It just screws in above the, uh, the tab. This motherboard has a couple M.2 slots. I'm not gonna be using them. You could install another, you know, some M.2 drives to have VMs that need high-speed storage, but I don't particularly need it on this since I have a Plex server and my FreeNAS server is separate and they all have their own M.2 stuff. So if I ever need to upgrade with any store high-speed storage on this, I can. I, I, I really do love AMD allowing ECC memory on their desktop chips, even though it's not like officially supported. Uh, I wish Intel would do that, but hey, that's, that's Intel's way. That being said, it wouldn't surprise me at all if in the next generation AMD just doesn't have that anymore because now they're not behind as much as they were. <sighs> Competition's good, but <laughs> as soon as as soon as whatever company you're rooting for is ahead, they're not your friend. Just just remember that. They're gonna take away whatever they can take away to to make more money. I have a couple Noctua Redux fans at the about at the back. They're just 80 millimeter or whatever. And they're just there because there were slots, so that I don't really need them, but whatever. And I've also got a 40 millimeter fan on the SAS expander because that thing really gets hot, so you really need cooling on that. Power supply setup's really simple. Power to the motherboard and a few serial ATA power connectors. Just a, uh, one per bank of three drives. Also have a bank of four regular serial ATA 
SSDs that are gonna be uh, virtual machine storage and whatnot. So I just 3D printed a little tray that'll stick in here somewhere. I do really like these four in one serial ATA cables. They make your build a lot cleaner when you have to run a bunch of drives and uh, they really aren't expensive. I mean, you can get super cheap serial ATA cables, but do you really want to use those? So if you're paying realistic prices for those, these really aren't much more than those. So it's really a no brainer. It just, they look a lot nicer. So, uh, and they're a lot easier to run with the sleeved cable. The main difference between this case and the case I used for my PF Sense build is that this one's a couple inches longer and it has room for a fan wall. And it actually comes with this installed with 120 millimeter fans on it. But in this current setup with low, a low power CPU, I really don't need that extra noise and just the weight and everything. So there's no point in putting that in. Um, it's there if I need it. It's really not needed in a low power build like this, where, where you got to really move air over the CPUs and stuff. This is all just, just heat from the hard drives that I'm using. And that's it. And I've also got one of these nice little stick on five to one fan expanders, which uh, really helps in a lot of builds like this where you just don't have enough motherboard ports. So I'm using one tucked under here to just connect all these like random simple fans to that don't really need much control. I'll just set them to like 60% or whatever and they're just keeping cards cool. Uh, the other port on the motherboard will just split off to the three industrial fans. And, and that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a pretty simple build, it's a simple motherboard. I just like that uh, Gigabyte actually bothered to put some ECC memory on their qualified vendor list. This uh, time tech stuff seems to work pretty well. You know, past mem test and all that stuff. I'd really like to get this thing running again very soon because the home assistant, the lack of home assistant is really driving me crazy. So I really need to get that back. So I'm just gonna build, build out the rest of this thing and we'll take a look at it before I close it up for a long time, hopefully. All right, well, I have all the drives installed except for one bay. And that is because for some reason, one of the Noctua industrial fans I'm running isn't working. That's really weird. <laughs> I've never had, well, I have lots and lots and lots of Noctua fans and I've had one fail ever. And it was a 40 millimeter fan that had been running for like four years. And you, you know what? They replaced it. <laughs> they they actually FedExed me a new fan from Austria to the US to replace it. I mean, come on, that's amazing. Anyway, uh, yeah, so one of the fans seems to not be working. So I'm gonna have to look into that. Other than that, everything seems to be working just fine. So I'm gonna box this up and put it on the rack and hopefully not have to open it up for a long time.